Today on Nova Legends Podcast, I have legendary Annandale football coach, uh, Dick Adams, who was the last uh, coach in the Northern region, uh, the former Northern region, to win two state championships in a row in 1993, 1994. Amazing coach, one of the greatest in the history of Northern Virginia. <laughs> coach, uh, great to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Julian. Sure. So, so look, Coach, I know a lot of people know you really well. You worked in the county for a very long time, but let me remind folks of your, your biography. Uh, uh, give some sketches of your of your background. You were a 75 graduate of Annandale. Um, I guess you were the, on the JV team when they won the state championship in 72. Um, you went to University of Richmond, uh, graduated uh, in uh, 1980. Uh, you were a defense alignment at Richmond, and I believe Annandale, I mean, offense alignment at Annandale and Richmond. Is that right, Coach? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, at, at Richmond, you studied your PE teaching and coaching and your history major. Um, eventually got a master's in education at George Mason. Um, uh, you you became an assistant for your your former coach, Bob Hardage. Uh, I think around 81, he got your job. You were working at Stewart, and he got your job teaching at um, Annandale. Uh, you, you were his assistant for, for years, and when, when Coach Hardage stepped down, uh, I believe in 91, you became the head coach. Um, kept that job to 2000 through 2010 season. You're also uh, assistant athletic director, uh, varsity and JV wrestling coach for, for a time, um, history teacher, uh, ran a successful landscaping business. And I understand, the, <laughs> uh, understand a Maurice, a Maurice Daniel, a linebacker who played at Penn State, pretty, pretty good linebacker, used to work for you a little bit. Um, you're a regional master's trainer for USA football and a safety cons consultant for the county. Coach, did, uh, did I get most of that correct? Yeah, I, I took over. I started in 1990 at Annandale. Coach Hardage retired in 1989. So I was 1990 to 2009. And um, no, I was I was the head wrestling coach for 11 years at Annandale. I was head track coach at Stewart for two years. And I was assistant track coach for Annandale probably about 20 years. I was a, I was a three sport athlete, uh, three sport coach for probably close to 30 years. Uh, and, with, yeah, I'm, with I'm uh, sorry, football, right. wrestling, and track. Yeah, in this environment today, is it hard for coaches uh, to to be a varsity coach in more than one sport? Now, I know Ed Henry did the same thing. He coached track, and he coached other. He coached, I think, he coached baseball for a time, and that was that was typical. Bob Menifee, the baseball coach at Robinson, where I went, was our freshman football coach. I mean, it was typical. He coached two or three teams in, in the old days. Is that doable today? Can can coaches do more than one? Yeah, versus no, you you hardly see that at all today. I mean, um, there's only a handful of coaches that let's say are are a head football coach and maybe they're a an assistant somewhere else at Annandale. Chris Baggett, who played for me and then coached with me, he is the head football coach in Annandale, and he's also the assistant baseball coach where he was formerly the head baseball coach. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very demanding time-wise and what they put into it today is a little bit different. Um, but I think it's a good thing. I, I really, I, I thought, I don't care if it was today or 30 years ago, when you're involved in a variety of sports, I, I think it's critical, like for our kids to be involved in a majority of things. I mean, today, a lot of kids put all of their emphasis and eggs in one basket. And if that doesn't work out for them and their parents, you know, they don't have anywhere to turn. I, I can remember we, we had, um, you know, the best thing we had going on was I had almost my entire coaching staff coach football and then track. And uh, my brother, who was the, my defensive coordinator and secondary coach, uh, was our head track coach, Jamie Kiriannis. And um, and our entire, probably five of our coaches coached track. And we had 300 kids on the track team. And including Maurice Daniels, Donovan Yarbo, who was uh, went to Penn, went to Boston College, uh, Derek Crittenden went to Boston College, all Division One athletes. And it, it, was in, it, it was an incredible asset, um, I thought. And back then, it was it, those were the kind of things that major colleges really liked. They 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 really loved competitors, you know, and two to three sport athletes. And 
Today it's a, a little tougher to see. So it, it's when your coaches are doing it, the kids tend to want to do it a little more also. Yeah. Well, it's easy to see the synergies between track and football. What about what about wrestling? Did coaching wrestling make you a better football coach? Oh gosh, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm still I I, I coach wrestling. I, I have never stopped. Um, I was head wrestling coach for eleven years, and then I've been an assistant at Annandale, um, and then I moved on. And my offensive line coach Keith Shoulders, um, who was a George Mason wrestler, and then Keith, he was our offensive line coach. Keith got the job at Westfield. And I was two years with him at Westfield. And my son, um, as he graduated from Marshall University, got the head job at Brentsville District, which has been a very uh, successful wrestling program. And so I've been helping him the last seven years with the you know younger kids. But um, wrestling is a wrestling and track are the, are the two things that have a tremendous impact on our football players. I think you know that was a key to our success it really was uh, but uh you know that that was that was our frame of mind yeah well, well, well coach you, you also uh were a history teacher at least for part of your time there i believe coach ed henry was a history teacher in the early days one thing that mark bendorf told me it's hard for a head football coach to have a substantive type class to, to teach history to teach math it's a little bit easier to teach uh physical education if you're going to be because you're in the gym and um, maybe the preparation at night is not quite the same. Uh, is that true? Do you think over time it's harder to be like a history teacher and a, and a head football coach with a time? Oh, without coach? a doubt. No, I started off, I, my very first job I had, I was security at uh, Jeb Stewart High School. Mm -hmm. And that was my first year, and which was great. And then the second year at Jeb Stewart, uh, they, I, I taught three different social studies preps, U.S. history, world history, and government. And I got into teaching education and I transferred. Bob Hartage got was able to get me over to Annandale, where I taught, was able to teach um PE, physical education. I taught history and driver education. And so having those uh, you know, having that diversity was able to get me in. Uh, but no, the history, uh what you had to do in terms of preparation and grading and, and a variety of things was uh, a, a tremendous amount of work. And physical education is great, but if you're a physical education teacher in a high school and you're not coaching something, that that's, that's a tough thing. I mean, there's no way you shouldn't be coaching some something at that high school and uh, be, be, because of the fact that you have the time to be able to do it. And some people choose not to. And that's, again, that's the way it goes today. But uh, yeah. anyways, yeah. yeah. Well, coach, you coach for many years and you're still coaching now. Um, obviously, the role of a coach has changed. There's parents, there's there's video, the recruiting is more, it's different, the social media, um, you know, the, the way uh, the journalists, newspapers cover sports is completely different now than when, especially when you played when, and I know football was king. Um, when you when you look at the job of a coach now, um, what are some of the pluses and minuses of coaching football today, as opposed to when you when you started in 1991 as a head varsity coach, or 90 as a head varsity coach? Well, I think if you're coaching in the public school system, it, it's about you know it's about getting kids involved. It's about helping kids, um, and. You know, and and I've I've when I was at USA Football, I had the chance to work with a lot of guys in the private school system. I mean, from you name it. I mean, the top schools: Saint Ignatius in Ohio, Saint Xavier in Ohio, John Bosco. I mean, and and their role, you know, and and the money they had available to them, it was on a different level. And um, but at a public high school, you know, it, it, and it's about winning, and everybody's trying to win. But the bottom line is it's getting kids involved and helping kids. And you're going to have good years and bad years. And I had those, you know, we won state championships and, and then we had some tough years, but it was still about helping kids and keeping them involved. And the big thing today is like mental health, which is kids involved and playing. And so um, I, I don't think that aspect has changed. The, the whole thing has changed. The environment has changed for the kids and the parents. Um, 
you know, it's, it's not the, the, you know, we've got some great kids and they're, they're, they're doing tremendous things. Um, but the environment, you know, with social media technology, it's totally different than 30, 40 years ago. And, uh, you know, when you were the only game in town. Um, so I think that's what the kids are facing today, you know? And so, but again, it's a, about l liking to work with kids, you know, in a school system and, 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 and helping them, you know, along the way and, and being a mentor, you know, so. So Coach, when you think back, we, we just had our first um, Friday night, uh, round of Friday games, at least half the teams played um, uh, last week. Uh, you know, when you go, when you, when you put your coaching hat back on, uh, what are those moments like you, you have a summer of workouts, you have summer practice and two a days and you have your first game. And uh, oftentimes I bet you your vision of what your team was going to be changes once you played the first game as a coach, uh, what, what, what was your mindset right about now after you played your first game, after all the work from the summer and you have a game and you, and you look at what you did. Uh, would you have a lot of work? To, would you have a lot of work to do right now? After well, it depends. You know, it, it depends how your team, how your team fares. I mean, yeah. you know, I I mean, my very first year, um, the very first scrimmage of the year it was probably I was more, um, I, I was more excited and concerned and worried about a simple scrimmage. You know, it was the first time out of the gate than anything else. And and with that that year we ended up going to the state semifinals. We lost one game. Um, and then there were years, you know, when we had the '93 and '94 team, and the '93 team, which won the state championship, we thought we had a, a bunch of guys that could just go one way, and we tried to do that, and we got by with that the first game, and then the second game we we suffered a, a, a tough loss to Lake Braddock, six to three had the ball inside the five yard line three times, couldn't score. And following that, we made dramatic changes and ended up having about four or five guys go both ways and, and didn't lose a game after that. And with a 94 team, you know, we came out of the gates and just were nonstop. And um, so it, it, it kind of depends on the group that you have and the veterans and the situation that you are in as the season, you know, your scrimmages go on and your first game. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's, it's different challenges. Do you miss the excitement of the new season? Like for example, a guy that you coached against probably numerous times, Hanson is still uh, plugging away over at Yorktown. Yeah. Do, 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 do you miss the excitement of a new season? Bruce Hanson is a, is a very good friend of mine. Um, I played against Bruce, but I was a high school senior at Annandale, and Bruce was the head coach at Wakefield in 1974. Is that right? And he was very young, and I and I was I, I started as a as a high school football player against Bruce, and um, and Bruce uh, were very good friends, and he's still a co coach in a day, and he just, you know, for for him. He still has the uh, the juice. He's got kids that have that that have come back and played for him that are coaching with him, and you know, and, and that I I admire him. I, I happen to know, you know, in in 2013, you know, it's funny, you know, you you put so much into it. I mean, seven days a week. I had a wife and three kids, and didn't miss a thing, and coached three sports ran a lawn service to make ends meet. And, but, it, you know, in 2009, it was, I just, it was time to get out. Um, so as the head coach, I stepped down and then I was the assistant athletic director. And, and then three years later, well, and then I started coaching youth club football with my brother and my nephews and with the Gainesville Grizzlies. And then I helped out uh, uh, my a good player of mine, Jeremiah Davis who went Penn to Penn State player. and was at West Potomac. And then when he was at Herndon, got back into it with Herndon and was having fun. And then he got out and then I went back to Annandale and, you know, was coaching freshman football for the last six years uh, with the kid guys that I hired or played for me, which was great. And, 
this is the first time in 44 years that I haven't coached. Um, but uh, Bruce is, I, I admire him and he's got a great thing going and it's awesome. But I, I, I now go around, I watch practice every day at a different school. Um, I'm working for Fairfax County in the office of athletics and activities. And, and then I'm, I go to a game every Friday night and just watch. And um, no, you'd love to do it, but uh, I'm pretty kind of banged up right now. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, coach, go back to where it all started, you know, as a night, as a 75 grad of Annandale, you probably came along at a very exciting time in football. Lombardi had coached the Redskins. I believe in, it was a, the 69 season. George Allen came in 71. So uh, Washington was becoming a football town during that, during you know your teen years. You know, leaving Annandale aside, you know, the all-American city, uh, you know, and a, a football powerhouse, it must have been an exciting time to be um, a, a sports fan in D.C. around that time. Yeah. Um, but you got to understand, uh, you know, my family, we moved – my dad was Navy and we moved down here from, um, from Maine and we moved into the Annandale school district and Annandale was a complete powerhouse. And to be able to play at Annandale on a Friday night was like going to an NFL game. And it, it was, people don't understand. I mean, it was, you'd had six, 7,000 people at a game every Friday in a stadium that holds like 4,000. And um, it was a dream when you were in elementary school, middle school, and then got to play at Annandale um, or neighboring schools. But but every school was like that. Every school, everywhere you went, it was a packed house. Um, we would travel as a little kid in the neighborhood. When I wasn't, before I got to Annandale, we would, we would a, a neighborhood father would take a bunch of guys and we'd go, if we didn't go to Annandale to see the game, we'd go to the, the, the visiting team. I mean, that's what you did on a Friday night. And again, I go back to like, you know, no, there were no video games. There were no, you know, cell phones. There were none of that. That was so what you live for. That's what you dream for. Um, so it was incredible. I don't know if it's an act of God or whatever, but to move into the Annandale school district was tremendous. Yeah. Did it ever get you? Does, does it make you? Does it make you sad? Did you ever get envious later on when after the shopping malls and the video games came along and Friday nights were no longer? You get a couple thousand for a nice rivalry, so there would still be some energy in the air. But it was nothing like the way you had it. I saw a picture when Edison played Annandale back in '65 when Pat Toomey was there. There's fans lying in the end zone, uh, you know, in Annandale High. You know, it's just an amazing environment. Did it ever make you kind of sad that that environment left us? Oh, gosh, yeah. No, it, it's a shame. Um, but, and people just don't, they, unless you lived it, they, 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 they don't remember it. I mean, um, no, it was, in, I, I've been to some games, you know, later on, uh, you know, Centerville, you know, versus Robinson or Madison Stonebridge, or, you know, there's been a few games that's generated that much attention um but nothing like back earlier you know in the day the rivalries um i mean it was a really neat, uh, it, was, it was a great era to be in and uh, and now you've got you've got you can stream it nfhs network mm -hmm. so if you just don't feel like going out you can just pay 11.99 a month and and watch it on online which a lot of people do i think um but it's just, yeah, it's it's tough, you know, because it's, it involves the whole school, the band, the cheerleaders. It affects the team, you know. It's the neatest thing to be able to run. You, you run out on the field and get introduced in in front of a crowd. A, I mean, a packed house on both sides. Um, that was really neat. Yeah, I, you know, uh, coach, when I when I started Robinson in the seventh grade, I believe it was fall of eighty of seventy eight. Um, Robinson had just been to the state final in basketball. That was Greg Dennis. They missed foul shots in the end. It could have won a state title. So I, I got there that fall. There would be three or 4,000 people for a basketball game on a Tuesday night. Right. Three or 4,000 on a Tuesday night for a basketball game with Robinson. I, I, you know, as a seventh grader, it was, it was unbelievable. The, 
excitement around there. And then by the time I played, there'll be 200 people. Well, but it's, <laughs> we it's motivating. Good. I mean, it, it makes you, it makes you want to be a part of that as a, as a student. And then it also, it's also a reason why you don't give up, why you don't quit. Um, and, and it just, it, it made you want to be a part of it. And, and that's a tough thing. That's the shame of it. Um, you know, kids were, because of that environment, you're willing to sacrifice more. Yeah. Well, one thing that happened to the Annandale, the, the Annandale uh, uh, school district has changed so dramatically through the years. First of all, uh, it was the all American city, but it was, it was, you know, there was almost no diversity. Now it's one of the most diverse areas in, in the area, probably the country. You couldn't get more diverse in Annandale high school today. But one of the biggest changes is when, TJ closed and became a high tech school, and you, the area, the, the school district changed because those kids came to Annandale. Um, when you think about the the initial Annandale, you know, school district and the demographic, and you know the changes that happened with with TJ, um, what did that do? I know, I know it gave you a whole bunch of athletes, like the Crittenden's were nice to have, but what did it do to, to the community of the high school when you changed when Jefferson was added to the to the school district? Well, that was a that was a that was a shot in the arm for us. It really was. Uh, I mean, just like you said, we 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 received it's you know uh, some athletes from areas that they had that really made a difference for us. Um, and it was on the end of Coach Hardage's career and the beginning of mine. And um, we, I mean, I'm telling you we were able to utilize those athletes and, and then other ones moving forward that made a huge difference. But just like you said, we, we were Annandale in the last 15 years has been systematically taken apart. I mean, we lost an area called Wakefield chapel, which was what is now going to Woodson and which was a huge uh, part of our community. We, we lost Ravensworth Farms. We lost Edsel Park, which where, you know, we had, I mean, tremendous athletes. You go right down the middle of downtown Annandale, 236, everything north of that, downtown Annandale goes to Falls Church, you know, our neighboring mm -hmm. rival. And, and so, um, no, it, it, it's, 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 it's very tough for Annandale today um, be, because we have night great kids, they're super nice, but just you know, we're talking, you're talking about diversity. Um, and they mean well, they want to do well. Um, but they're, they're, they're from their, their parents to people just don't understand what you know, everything involved. And, um, no, it makes it, it makes it hard. It's a great group of kids, but yeah, yeah, you just don't, you don't have the people that are. That, that know what it takes so much and that are 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 committed to you know, you know um preparation and and the wherewithal um you know it's challenging it really is it, it's it's very challenging yeah the families just don't value football as much they might, they might value soccer or other sports and it's just it's different when you don't have it's a cultural difference hey Co coach I wanted to go back to your JV year at, at, at Annandale um was it was it uh what was the environment like at a JV game when you when you're when your seniors are when, when the varsity was winning states um and you know that that had to be a huge moment did you have a, a great environment also for a JV game would there be a big crowd for a JV game no no really. I mean Bob Hardage had a system and he would which really worked for him um and the and the best sophomores in the class he would develop like a class every four years. And, you know, the, the best sophomores would, he would bring up and he would integrate them into the program and he would uh, develop it. Now the, J, the JV, we were okay. Uh, my JV coach, uh, 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 which was uh, Mr. David Carter, who was phenomenal. Um, no, it was, it was the, the emphasis was really on the freshman, um, like my freshman year. We had 120 kids out for freshman football and we had two teams. Wow. We had an A team and a B team. Wow. And um, no, and to make the A team was, you know, just incredible, you know, to make that. And they, they worked you. 
very hard. And Wallace Bolding, at the stadium's named after, was, you know, the key mentor, an English teacher, a great guy. And then the JV was kind of a middle of the road type thing, you know. And and so I played JV football, but I was kind of on the fringe with the varsity, meaning I would work out with the varsity team. I was kind of like a um I I was a practice squad guy. And then at the and then at the 97, the, the 72 team, when they went to the state play, playoffs, I was brought up and be, was a part of that. Oh, great. But I was just a part of it. I wasn't an integral part of it, but I was a, <laughs> you know, I was a, a practice squad guy. They beat on and, but I was on the sideline for every, you know, game and all the way through. It was awesome. Um, it was a really neat thing. And then I ended up actually starting, you know, my junior and senior year and all that. So. Well, Coach Hardage, uh, he lived in the Robinson district. His, his daughter was the head cheerleader at Robinson when I was there. She was a couple years old, older than me. I think her name was Lynn Hardage. Right. Um, but he was, he, was, he, was such a, he was such a legend. I've interviewed Mark Cox, as you probably know. I've interviewed the 78 um, Anadil team. Uh, Hardage uh, was a guy that – Coach Hardage was a guy that um, really focused on execution. Uh, he, his playbook wasn't enormous. Um, but the things you guys did, you did really well. Um, and, and the guys told me that he was very demanding of his assistant coaches. And if the assistant coaches, if their troops made mistakes, he'd hold them account accountable. He also gave each player a score after each game. Um, what are, uh, are, are these, are these part of your memory as well? And what are some of the things you remember about coach Hardage? Well, I remember, you know, uh, first of all, I, I, you know, I wanted to do everything in the world I could do to please him as a player and a coach. And so when I got the opportunity to, to, to when he brought me over from Stewart to coach with him, I mean, I worked around the clock. I, I, I was the offensive line coach. Um, I coached special teams. Um, I just, I, I, I wanted to do anything to please him. And I wanted us to be successful. And, but, one thing that he was that a lot of people may not recognize, he was tre a tremendous defensive coach. Um, you know, he, he you know, ran the offense, called the offense. Um, but his, his mind for defense was tremendous. Because when I took over as the head coach, I, I can remember talking to coach on a, a multiple occasions on, strategy to defend people and when I, my my first year or so um but he had a great staff he, he had a great staff of coaches and and the reason people stayed was because he was a a, a great person to work with um and he he, he just he, he would ask you i mean he he asked you know you know when we would finish a practice okay what do you need the next day you know he he didn't just planning himself he would consistently consult with his staff and um and again his staff was comprised of people like tom Seacules, charlie martin bob herb i mean these guys were all head coaches um cordell gill um um you know everett cloud i mean these were phenomenal people and everybody was in the building everybody taught at annandale high school and and that's another thing we've lost you know, we just don't have the opportunity to have every, all these coaches in the building that I have able to work with kids in different aspects that they see within a building. Um, it, it's just a tough thing. That's, that's probably one of the toughest things is not having all of your coaches in the building. Not that, they're, not that, not that the coaches there are, are bad people, not at all, but it's just, it's a plus to see them as a, as a history teacher as a PE teacher, as a science teacher, as a gut, as a guidance counselor, um, you know, that, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm reminded of when, when, you, when you talk about that are, are coaching trees. Hardage definitely, you know, uh, Seculis and, and, and you and others became head coaches and stuff. And, and, you know, Ed Henry had his with the Bendorfs, you know, there, there were these, um, the Mount Vernon coach, Bruce, uh, coach, uh, Bruce, Bruce Patrick. Which Patrick had his coaching. There are all these coaching trees, and every once in a while you have an outsider come in. Um, 
uh, like Danny Meyer would come in who, who coach and basketball. We had the same thing, a cool head is tree. Right. Uh, and is, is that a thing today where, you know, there's like this, there's like a coaching tree and they spread out and there's, I don't say, I don't think it's clicky, but the coaches seem to all come, the great coaches seem to all come from the same source. Well, it's uh, uh, today. It's, it's not quite as much. Um, it's, it's, it, it's a tough thing. Um, you, you, it, it's just, it's tougher to get people in. It's, it's less people are staying longer. I mean, back in the day with Bob Hardage and Ed Henry, these guys made a career out of coaching. Like I, I did, I, I didn't want to be an administrator. I coached for 33 years, but, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing uh, to be an administrator, but it's just, people are putting in five, 10 years and they're getting out of it. And, and, and a lot of the assistants are, again, they're not, they're not educators. They're, you know, they're people that just want to coach. They might come and go. Um, there's a lot of turnover. I mean, every year we're looking at three to four positions opening up. That never used to happen. You know, when there was a head job open somewhere, I mean, you had multiple candidates and they all came from Fairfax County. Not that they could, not that there were people outside the county that weren't good, but um, so I, I think you're seeing a little less of that. Now, luckily, I, I like, you know, at Annandale, we we've been able to maintain it's 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 pretty unique. Um Ed Henry, uh Coach Winkler, and nobody knows him really, was the first coach at Annandale High School in 1954 for two years. And then Ed Henry took over. And then Ed Henry was the person to put Annandale on the map, won a state championship, and Bob Hardage played for him, and then came back and coached with him. And then Coach Hardage succeeded him. And then I played for Coach Hardage and played for him and coached with him. And then I took over when Coach Hardage uh, stepped down and retired. And then Mike Scott played for Coach Hardage and myself and coached with me. And then Mike Scott took over for me. And then today, Chris Baggett, who played for me and coached with me and coached with Mike, when Mike stepped down two years ago, Chris Baggett took over for us as an Annandale person. So um, I feel we feel really good about that. It's a neat thing. And, um, and you know, it's been tough. Chris is doing a good job, great job. But it's just, you know, it, things are tougher. But that's a neat thing there. Um, and you don't see that anywhere else. I mean, nowhere else. So, yeah. that is that is a great coach. Um, these great coaches that that we've talked about, um, uh, Ed Ed Henry, um, obviously Bob Hardage, Glenn Furman, all these great coaches. Do you think if they were to coach today, it would be the same result? Like, for example, I have no doubt Ed Henry would be a great coach today. I was in the program when he we, when he coached at Robinson. He was definitely an innovator. He would have been able to change with the times. But do you think generally the old school coaches of those days? would be just as successful today? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And the reason is because they were character guys. They weren't, they weren't, these guys weren't stupid. I mean, <laughs> um, no, they, 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 like you said, right. You talk about changing over the times. That's the one thing like, like Mike Scott, when he took over for me, um, Mike had this, had, a, had a, a great staff of guys, basically all my, all the whole staff stayed when Mike got the job at Annandale. And, um, and for three years, they tried to, you know, they basically ran the same offense and things, but they didn't have the guys. They didn't have the linemen. They couldn't run, you know, the same kind of eye formation offense or whatever. And what happened was, and Mike was on the defensive side of the ball. And what Mike Scott did was he went out and he, he completely revamped the offense, took a chance, put himself on the offensive side of the ball. And they really ran an up-tempo kind of offense um, out of um, like what Auburn was doing and which completely changed their dynamics and, and made them extremely competitive with lesser people. And so um, I think you would see, you would have seen that with all of those fellows you were talking about, you know, Bob Hardage and Henry, you know, I, I, I Danny, I remember, and Danny was a, is a good friend of mine. And even when he was a principal and took over at Robinson for a year, um, you know, they were successful. So these guys were, were, were football coaches and, you know, they, they would make 
those kind of adjustments, I think. Yeah. Well, coach, your junior year, you finally made you finally made the varsity team, and and you, you talked about how special the environment was. Do you still remember the first time you took the field as a varsity player? At oh Annandale? gosh, yeah. No, at, at Annandale, the way it was was we would on Wednesday we would run the first offense versus the first defense, and again back then nobody was a two way player, so um, we would do a goal line period and the, the four plays to score. And if the offense scored, they would get introduced. And if the defense scored, then they'd get a defense stops you, they get introduced. And to be introduced, they would call you out. You know, you'd run out from the goalpost on the, in the midfield um, and in front of a crowd of like six, 7,000 people. And that was huge. And so, yeah, no, I remember it distinctly. It was incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's what I was talking about. It was the most awesome thing in the world. You live for that as a little kid going to the games. So, um, yeah, I remember that. And and we were, I remember, yeah, we won that first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. treat you different. I'm sorry, coach. Go, no, 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 no. I just remember that first time. Yeah. Getting called out and running out there. And it yeah. was incredible. Yeah. Do people treat you differently at school after starting on the, on, nah, the team? Nah. <laughs> The biggest thing was the back then, um, during the year, nobody quit. Now, they may not come back out the next year, but during the year, like nobody quit. You wouldn't quit during the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, today you see kids sometimes that, that will quit during the season or this, that, and the other. But back then, you never quit during the, the, the year. If you made it, you never quit. Uh, again, like I said, you may not come back out, but you never quit. And um, yeah, that, that, those type things. Well, coach, I know you're coming off a state championship. Um, who did you guys? I think the next year you guys won the district again. So you, you did win districts. So what, what did you what did you guys have coming back in '73? And and uh, what kind of year did you have? Well, you got to understand. This is how tough it was. You had three districts, okay? And the northern district back then, ours. You had T.C. Williams, who was mm -hmm. always a powerhouse. Annandale, Jeb Stewart, believe it or not, was a powerhouse. Wakefield was legit. Um, you know, Woodson was a powerhouse. Fairfax, I, I mean, it was an incredible district. And then there was two other districts. And only two teams out of the three districts made the playoffs. And there was just a regional playoff. Today, you've got, you've got eight teams from the two regions. OK, eight teams that I mean, so we were we were the returning regional, I mean, state champions in 1973. And we had a guy, Mike Lacito, who I just talked to last week, who was you want to talk about a legend. He was a leading rusher at Annandale. I mean, he was a stud. We had Mike. We had everybody back but a quarterback. Um, and um. We went 8-0, and, and we played Woodson, all right, and they, who was 8-0, and, and had a kid named Mel Collins, who went to Carolina, was awesome. And it was like, I mean, we had, there was 15,000 people at, at Woodson. I mean, it took us, you couldn't even, it took, we were late getting there. There was so much traffic. Um, and we ended up losing. We lost to Woodson, and they just outplayed us. And we ended up going eight and two. The, the last game we played Fairfax and, you know, it was just, a, there was no juice in the tank and we went eight and two and we didn't get in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then my senior year, we went nine and one. We lost the opening game to Stewart, Jeb Stewart, who was, went to the regional. We went nine and one and didn't get the playoffs. That's what it was. I mean, that's how hard it was back then. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. In this so, day of six classifications and numerous bites of the apple, it's just ridiculous how watered down we've let our 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 sports get. Were people really disappointed, Coach, when you did not make the when you did oh, the yeah. dance? Oh uh, gosh, yeah. I mean, no, no, no. It was. I mean, no. We were again. We didn't. We we uh, hit, we had a guy, Billy Dobson, who was a good, great guy. Great kid and and worked hard, but we just didn't have that pure passer at quarterback. So we really didn't have the passing. Had a great running game and and played pretty good defense. And 
But nah, but yeah, Annandale, I mean, you're talking from the 60s, from 65 to 75. I mean, it was an anticipation to to be in it, you know, for the regional championship and go to the state, you know, playoffs, that type of thing. And 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 that was what was really anticipated, you know, in the community. So yeah. Well, coach, with all these great teams in Northern Virginia, even just in your district, who are some of the great coaches that we might have forgotten about that we don't talk about today? Maybe they got out of the game. And because I, I'm sure that there are guys that were great coaches that we just they maybe they stopped in the 80s and um, they didn't have assistance that carried on. Can you think of anybody? Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Fairfax always had a, a, a different people. They were always tough. And again, later on when I was coaching, and I'm sure you probably, you know, Tom Verbanek, of course. Now, I mean, this is later on, but Tom is, is my age and, and we coached against each other. Tom was at Fairfax mm -hmm. and then um, with Francis Dahl, you know, and Francis again, and this is later on really, but you know, and Francis, who's not with us anymore, Francis was at, at Fairfax and Francis, you know, went to Lake Braddock and did a great job. So we, and we always competed against each other. And then Tom and myself, you know, and Tom was on the staff and then Tom took over and then Tom was at Fairfax and then Tom was at uh, Westfield and we competed against them at Westfield. And, you know, all those like, like, like Pete Bendorf, you had Mark Bendorf, who we were good friends and, and competed against each other. And, and, and they were all part of someone else's, you know, coaching tree. Um, but, you know, a, a guy who, who's not with us anymore, but was a, a hell of a coach was Jerry Falls and Stewart. Yeah. The stadium uh, is named, nobody, the stadium nobody, that. nobody remembers that. Yeah. Jerry Falls and Jeb Stewart was a heck of a coach and they had a heck of a team. I mean, for us, that was always, even when we won, we won a state championship in 72 and we lost to them 22-21 um early in the year and we're able to come back and make a run and got to the state playoffs and won it but uh that was that was constant it was funny though because jerry he retired and that was the first place i went george mandez took over for him at jeb stewart in 1980 and that was my first job oh, um, was after jerry left and yeah yeah but uh he was something yeah, I interviewed Jim Smith, legendary basketball coach. He played for Jerry, Jerry Falls in, in the stadium. And Stewart is is uh is is still named after him. So so coach, you you were on the generation of players that played against lots of African American players for, for the first time in all your three years. I mean, it wasn't just TC Williams. All the schools were beginning to have black players. Not maybe not a lot of them, but they all had had a few more than a few. Do you remember any tension on the field? Was that something that was notable for no. the time? Not at all. No, not not with us. No, no. And I remember when we um and and when when I was playing, we didn't really have, the only place we played where African American students were really getting involved with Wakefield. Mm -hmm. I remember at Wakefield. My senior, it was my senior year in 1974 when Bruce Hansen was coaching, and it was a hell of a game. And we went down to Wakefield and we beat them 10 nothing. And I mean, it was a rock 'em, sock 'em. I mean, they were tough. Mm -hmm. And we beat them and we got on a bus. And um, Coach Hardage told us, Yeah, keep your helmets on and roll, put the windows up. Mm -hmm. And the fans were not happy. And so, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we had no problem on the field. Yeah. We had no problem on the field at all. Mm -hmm. And even like with TC Williams and I, um, I got to know, I was in a couple of all-star games with some players from TC and great guys on, on the field. We, we never had a problem. Mm -hmm. Not like some altercations today that have gone on and, and this, and that, that's just, that's just people being knuckleheads, but no, we, we didn't, we didn't have that problem. Um, you know, at all, even, even when I was, when, and again, in Annandale in the, in the late eighties and early nineties, you know, we started, that's when we really started getting diverse with, uh, we had a variety of Latinos, African-Americans, even in our school, which 
um, and sometimes was a getting to be kind of come to a head. Mm -hmm. um, but on our team, we had no problem ever. Well, Coach, how, how about in school? You went to school kind of in a tumultuous time. The Vietnam War ended while you were in high school. Uh, you know, uh, Nixon, Nixon resigned, the hippie years. There was a lot going on when you were in high school. Do you remember those times as being tumultuous at all at school? No, no, I don't. I, I know what you're talking about, but um, mm -hmm. not, not with that. You know, we weren't having riots. We weren't having protests. We weren't. Kids weren't acting out about things like that. I, I, I yeah, that doesn't come to mind. Yeah. We had other knucklehead situations, but um, not so much like that. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know, maybe because people were involved in things and and sports, and we had you know our coaches and whatever. It was just not that that wasn't a problem for us. Yeah. Well, coach, you ended up you chose the University of Richmond, the Spiders at the time. They were in a Southern Conference, the mythical Southern Conference of uh, that it, it was beginning to break apart piece by piece, but it had an incredibly rich history. I know you joined, I found this great picture on Facebook. There was four other Adams that were playing in Richmond, Lou Bonato, Dave Sylvester, jo Joe Kroger, Jamie Karyanis, who I believe you mentioned earlier, right. earlier today. You played for coach Jim Tate. Um, you know, the, it wasn't the winning, pro, the winning machine that Annandale was. Uh, why did you choose uh, University of Richmond? Well, because it was pretty much my only chance. <laughs> <laughs> they they offered me they um they had had a guy at center that was a smaller at the time I was a a, a, a smaller type center that was quick and they um, saw in me at that time it was right place right time. And came from a good program, so they gave me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate. I mean, there's no way today, like today, there's no way I would have a, a Division One scholarship. And But uh, I made the most of it. And um, no, it was a great opportunity. A excellent school. And, um, and, we, and we played an incredible schedule. Uh, you know, outside of the Southern, they never should have got out of the Southern Conference, which was great. And we won it my freshman year. We won, you know. But, you know, we were playing um, at the time. We played Georgia my freshman year and almost beat Georgia. Wow. Literally. I mean, we were we, we were on the five-yard line going in, winning 24 to 21 uh, with five minutes left and threw an interception into the end zone. They drove 80 yards with no time left to beat us, believe it or not. Um, that would have been the game of the century. And – we played Wisconsin. We played West Virginia everywhere, Virginia Tech, Maryland, um, North Carolina. I played against um, Lawrence Taylor, for God's sake. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, but um, no, it was, it was a great opportunity. Well, Richmond ended up uh, at the beginnings of the one double A classification. When you when you think about that, is is it the same relation as Division One as it is today? I call it, I think the College Bowl or something different now. But is is Division One One A is it the same gap between those uh, divisions as it is today, or was it closer? Was it was the gap more narrow back then? No, I think it's a little closer today, and the reason it's closer is because okay, there's less scholarships. Well, that's going to go up now this year, right. but there were less scholarships when I was there. You had 105 guys on scholarship at that time. Wow. And even before that, it was unlimited, but it was down to 105. Then it dropped to 85. And so what's happened is you've had these guys that were Division One players that now are going to like smaller schools. And so, you know, you just saw like if you saw the Colorado game against like North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. I mean, North Dakota State has got a team. And Colorado with Deion Sand, they brought everybody in the world in. They had over 40 some transfers in the portal. Um, and North Dakota State played the heck out of them. It was and, a great you know, game. You watch, you know, well, Fresno State, they're like a legit program. I mean, they played the heck out of Michigan. But you're seeing those kind of games um, with, with schools that people consider to be maybe lesser schools playing these big time programs. And so there's, got, there's somewhere that these guys got to go. And then you're also seeing, I mean, today, the transfer portal has changed everything. It, it, it completely. 
you've got some great players going to smaller schools and then they're, they're getting in the portal and then they're transferring to, you know, greater programs. And so um, it's just, you know, there, there are just more better players that don't have a place to go initially. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know, this, it doesn't make any sense to go somewhere now and sit on the bench where you can go somewhere unless you're getting NIL money where you can right. go somewhere and play and then, and then, and then you can and level then, up. Exactly. Yeah. So you played for Jim Tate. What, what was he like as a coach? What, what did you learn from him that you may have used later on as a, as a head coach yourself? Um, well, I tell you, Jim Tate, um, he was a really good offensive mind. Um, and that's something that people don't, you know, really understand. I mean, I would later on as I, I, um, when I, when I got to Annandale, I used to run a bunch of free clinics and which was an idea of coach Hartages. And I would bring coach Tate up and his staff and he, and he had, uh, he had left Richmond and was at Virginia tech as an assistant. And I would bring them up and then he would do a clinic, um, you know, for the coaches in our region. And it was just, you know, and I, as I became a coach, I got to really sit back and listen to him as an offensive mind. And now he was very good. He, he, he was an excellent, you know, offensive mind. And um, now it was just the, the, the college coaching world is very demanding because it's totally based on wins and losses and you're, you're totally dominant predominant on the kids you have you've got to have great players otherwise you know you're and you don't win you're going to get fired no matter how smart you are so the coach tate was a, a really good offensive minded person and a very fair man yeah well coach uh you know, the last few years you were there you guys lost some games was it was it tough on you to, to lose um uh, that that many games after coming from you know a program like and that had won well, the toughest thing, yeah, the, the toughest thing was um, the fact that um, that it, it wasn't just like the lose. It, it was it was the way that people saw Annandale, and um, they and, and that you you felt that Annandale was not a good place to be, and it and it really was, and it and it and it tore me up. Um, you know, I just, um, cause I'd been there as a young kid when it was phenomenal. I got to be there as a player when it was phenomenal. And I had an, I had, I had the chance to be there as a coach and a head coach when it was phenomenal. And then, you know, and that's, that's the, the, the problem in Fairfax County, Northern Virginia today, and the difference between all the programs back in the day, the difference was about coaching. Okay. I, I mean, the school bases, except for really kind of the TC Williams there, TC probably had the most talent consistently around the region. I mean, they just did, they had the guys, but everywhere else it was, a it was about coaching and um, you know, and, and today because of the diversity it's a totally different ball game. You know, when you're, you're, you're looking at Loudoun County, the Western part of Fairfax, or you're going to Prince William County, you know, in Northern Virginia, you know, you, you, these are areas that have talented football players and it becomes more of a challenge, you know, and you're really looking at, and we're looking at this, you know, importantly in our, office but you look at our like let's say the national district okay and the national district is you're talking about annandale high school falls church lewis you're talking about edison mount vernon and you're talking you know um and then you've got you know hayfield high school now hayfield's going to be the most talented <laughs> group that you got i've been down to see them and 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 uh, but they just got you know uh, 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 besides everything else they're just they they they've got guys they're near the Fort Belvoir there's military kids going in there they've always had that talent you know Mount Vernon's pretty talented but it's a diversity that unlike everybody else in the Patriot District you know in the Concord District and even in the the Liberty District and so um, 
it's just a challenge. And and they're not, this is, they're great kids and they're working hard and they're all, they're all of these schools have kids, they're fighting. And, but, um, you, you know, this past week, you know, I think we looked at the scores and all the, the competitions, excluding the Hayfield score. And it was something like in the national district, 214 to like 45 points, you know, in all the competitions. And, um, you know, so it, that's a concern, but there's, but you know, you, there's not much we can do about that right now. Um, you know, they're not, it, it, everyone's division six, you know, they're in the same classification and, and they've done everything they can to try to try to, you know, make, give every team the opportunity to succeed. So, um, that's a challenge. You know, it really is, but um, no, I, 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 so it's not, there's, there's some, there's some great coaches in the entire so-called national district and working their butt off. I go around and see them. They're working as hard as everybody in every other district in the area. Um, but it's just, it's uh, challenging right now. Do you have as much fun when you're, when you're, when you're coaching a very diverse and a, and a, student, a demographic is not really favorable to American football. Can you have just as much fun coaching those kids and moving them along as you can when you're winning a state championship in Annandale? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yes. No, I, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, yes. And um, no, and that's the thing. It, it's about um, if you're in a public school, so it's about helping kids. So you see kids get better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and again, you you understand that. I mean, that was kind of the neat thing. I got to experience being at the highest level. Like, I mean, we were fourth in the nation on the ESPN poll in 1994. Okay. I mean, including all the private schools and this and that, you know, we had, a, it was a pretty good group. That was great. And then there was, you know, we went the next year, we went two and two and eight, which was really challenging. Um, but I get the same feedback from those guys as I do from the kids, you know, in 94 and 93 um, in terms of what it meant to them and what, what, you know, you as a coach meant to them. Um, and like even my last six years working with the freshmen at Annandale, um, you know, the impact that you have on kids. And if that's not good enough, then you ought to get out of it. Yeah. You know, you really should. Um, did you, did you enjoy being an assistant for Hardage? And, um, you know, did, did you, there's a lot of things about being a coach for him surprise you that you didn't really know about him. As oh, a I loved it. Oh no, no, I loved it. No, no, no. That was my dream. Are you, no, no, no. I had, I mean, I applied when I got out of college, I applied to every single high school in the state. Now back then there was no email. There was, I wrote a letter <laughs> to every head football coach, every athletic director, and every principal in the state of Virginia. And I got, you know, three, I got some opportunities in Winchester and this, that, and the other. I got a job at Garfield and I turned them all down. Um, and so I got, I, the job I took was at Stewart with George Mendez. And because it was the closest thing to Annandale, you know, and, um, and then I was able to get over to Annandale a year and a half later, you know, with Coach Hart. So that was a dream come true. Yeah. And he was awesome. And, and I talked to him today. You know, we're friends. Um, he's phenomenal. He's doing well. Mm. But that was the best thing that could ever have happened. You were talking earlier about the prestige of being a varsity player at Annandale. You know, I felt being a varsity player at Robinson was, was a big deal. But remember how important it was to be on these coaching staffs. When you see the assistant coaches, like I'd see Red Jenkins, you had Gary Reedy next to him. Right. It was, very, it was a big deal to be an assistant for these big programs back then. Oh, yeah. No, and I mean, Gary, I, I was at Stewart when Gary Reedy came, was at Stewart. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I know Gary real well. <laughs> yeah. I know Coach Jenkins, who was a phenomenal person. And, it, it, but like Red Jenkins, those guys, that Red Jenkins, you know, and Bob Hardin, and those guys, they were they were legendary because of the time they put in. They didn't put in ten years and become an administrator. Yeah, I mean, they were you know twenty, thirty years or more, and um, 
that's the thing is so, some people just that they're getting tired of it quicker now um and i you know i i not sure why i just um I had the opportunity to, to become an administrator and I, I just didn't want to. The best I did, I was the assistant AD. I was great with that. I did everything <laughs> uh, besides, you know, go to the big wig meetings. So, Well, two of the guys that you worked with as an assistant for Hardage, one of the guys I've interviewed, one of the guys I've been trying to interview, I interviewed Todd Crenetti, Coach Crenetti, great guy. And uh, I've been trying to get Ray Crittenden. Those were two... Uh, 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 great players for, for Annandale. Talk about those guys. Ray, yeah. Ray was um, was extremely talented. The whole family was. It was Ray and then Derek, who really, you know, I, I coached Ray as an assistant. And as, and then Derek, you know, I, I, I coached full-time as a head coach. Um, you know, and Ray ended up, Ray, you know, ended up with the Patriots. And then Derek you know, was at uh, Boston College. And then her sister, Monica, was an incredible track star. I mean, you talk about athletes. And their mom, the parents were phenomenal. <laughs> they were great people. I mean, great people. And then, um, you know, um, Crit, I mean, um, Todd Grinetti. Grinetti, Todd, Todd played for us. And his dad, Frank, you know, good friend of mine. We stay in touch. Um, and, and, I, and, and I know I've known Todd. Um, and, and he was involved in the USA football program. Todd's down in Florida and, and doing, you know, really well. And, um, and, and, and Todd was a really great kid. I mean, just a, a great kid, uh, you know, and, and he grew up as a football coach's son and, and this and that played quarterback for us and, you know, did a, did a great job for us. Uh, but the Crittenden family, yeah, that was just like genetics. Those guys, <laughs> Yeah. They all ran track. They, their, their, their mom and dad, they're just a, but it was a great family. Yeah. I mean, um, so it was, it was a blessing to have all those guys. Yeah. Well, Coach Hardage uh, uh, retires. I, I think he eventually coaches at private school, but you, you took, you took over the head job and you mentioned earlier that you went to, I think the state quarterfinals, the semifinals the first year. I would think it would be tough to follow a Bob Hardage because you're trying to do what he does and it'd be tough to be your own man. Was it, was it tough following a legend who had, who had done so well, or did, did you know exactly what you wanted? Well, it was, to yeah, but it, it was, but it was also motivation too. You wanted to, because I knew everybody, I knew coach Hardage and I knew coach Henry and um, Jim Finch, who had been our principal, who was my principal. And then, um, and then I knew Ralph Buckley, who was the first principal. So I know the whole Annadale family. So it was kind of like you wanted to, I wanted to do well for the entire organization. Um, and so you you talk about incredible motivation to work. And um, I don't know, I, you just, um, you, you, it was, it's, it's, it's what you, it's the kind of thing that you need to do you you need to be want to be the man and i i believe me i i was not smarter than coach hardage or coach at, at all but i i was able to had the motivation to put the work the time in and i had a, an incredible staff of guys i mean you know my staff of people that i had my brother jamie curianis played at annadale bob birmingham played at annadale billy edwards whose son starts at maryland now Billy Edwards played at Annandale. Marshall Jefferson played at Woodson. Oh, it was a great player. His dad, Roy Jefferson, yeah. um, you know, was with us. And Marshall was with us forever. Great. Guy. Um, yeah. And so Mark Cox started with me, yeah. played at Annandale. And it, we just had this, it, we had the, we had a great group. Terry Brown played at Annandale. Again, we'd lost several people. Um but um, now nah, it was, it, we were, I was really blessed with having a great staff um, because I was not the smartest guy in the room, but I had some great guys that were. So not together, really, you, I'm sorry, we, we, together, we really, you know, were motivated to do well. 
Yeah, we did great. Tactically, did you change things up from what Hardridge was doing? Did you, or did you keep pretty much um, things going the same way? A little bit. Yeah, well, a little bit. I mean, you know, not a great deal. And, that, and that's the way it was back then. You know, people were in the eye or people were doing this or, you know, doing that. We probably changed a little bit more on defense um, than anything else. You know, the funny thing was, you know, today, I, I tell you, and as I go around and watch practices, you know, the organization today of coaches is really good. I mean, they really do a great job. They really do. I mean, I, I enjoy watching practice and how people organize and and run their practices. Um, you know, back then, you know, it was the old uh, 8 to 11 in the morning, two-a-days. And then, you know, 3 to 5.30, you know, which was a grind. And I remember Terry Brown talked to me one year. It was like our second year. And he said, hey, you know, some people are really – they're going in the morning – you know, they're running like two practices, you know, with an hour break in between. And I'm like, <laughs> that was like revolutionary. <laughs> I mean, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, it just, I, you're stuck with some things. I was just fortunate that I, I had incredible mentors, you know, Bob Hardage and the guys on his staff um, that, that, that coached us, all of us. It was incredible. We we were we were very blessed to have that kind of, um, you know, education. Yeah. Well, coach in '93, you did something that uh, all coaches dream about, and that's win a state championship. You had Maurice Daniel, um, all met middle linebacker, two year, two times, also undersized offensive lineman, uh, Maurice Daniel. Um, you had a quarterback, uh, Joe Mc, uh, uh, John McPhail. Donovan Yarbrough, Corey Peterson, Prince Addy. You mentioned Derek um, Cridden, just just a great team. You beat you beat Pulaski on a windy day at, at Woodson. Uh, Pulaski was undefeated. Uh, and, and I think they had won twenty two games in a row, and they were defending state champions. You all you already had beaten Thomas Dale in the semis. Talk a little bit about that season and how special it was. Well, again, we started the year off, and we. Um... We played TC to open the season and, and beat them pretty good. And we were playing people pretty much one way. And then, like I said, we played Lake Braddock and lost to them six to three and had the ball inside the five yard, their five yard line three times and couldn't score. Meaning offense, our offensive line was not what we thought it was. And so we took Mo Daniels, Donovan Yarbo. Um, and another guy, um, Britton Critton, I mean, uh, Britton Clark, who were all starters on defense and put them on the offensive line. They went both ways. Mm -hmm. And we had a kid, we had another kid you didn't mention, Eric Jennings, mm -hmm. who was a hell of a tailback. And, um, and so we played Woodson the next week and the first half, it was, well, literally, uh, Mo Daniels and Donovan and the other young man, Britton Clark. They all work for me on my landscaping business. Mm -hmm. And so they were working on the weekends and I literally taught them on a Sunday how to, I put them through a couple of our running plays, you know, teaching them what to do. And um, we lined up against Woodson. Now it was three to nothing at the half. And we, we literally, we knocked the heck out of them on defense, but we were getting it together. By the end of the game, it was 35 to nothing. And from that moment on, we rolled. I mean, Thomas Dale, we beat them in overtime, and they were loaded. They had a kid, um, um, a wide receiver, Ricky. I forget the last name. He played at Tech. They had a they had a running back that was phenomenal, and um, but we beat them in overtime, and then we played Pulaski County, and. Um, and they were like ranked tenth in the nation, former, you know, the defending state champions, and uh, it was incredibly windy. But the one thing we had going for us was they just they pretty much just ran the ball, and we just put nine guys in the box and took away their wing T, you know, offense and scored a couple times and played great defense and and won that. And we had but we had everybody back. Almost every all those guys you mentioned, uh, Daniels, the Crittenden, Donovan, all the, we had everybody back 
their senior year in the 94 team. So that was a, a great group. Yeah, well, Coach, I, I watched a little bit of that video uh, today of the 93 championship game against Pulaski. It was really cool. Uh, Willie, Willie Lanier, Hall of Famer, was doing the uh, color commentary. Right. On that, right. was re- that was really cool. To see. Yeah. Willie, I mean, just to see Willie Lanier, I was like, <laughs> what the heck's going on? So, Coach, 94 to repeat like that. You know, you always hear it's tough to repeat. People get kind of happy. They don't work as hard. Uh, what did you do to get the kids to, to redouble their efforts and make sure they didn't um, it kind of rests on their laurels. Well, everybody, everybody was, for the most part, two, three sport athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Mo Daniels uh, played, basketball. played basketball and was a track athlete. Yeah. Donovan Yarbo, basketball, track athlete. Crittenden, basketball, track athlete. Um, and, and numerous other guys. And um, so, but when we got you know, we started football. I mean, it was just, no, it, it was, it was, it, we, it was a tough camp. There was, um, there was no resting. Um, they had expectations. They wanted to do well. And we, um, we came the, the toughest game we had that year. We played Garfield high school next to last game and they were five and four in a nail biter. And um, the funny thing is, you know, we had our mothers, all of our moms wanted to do like a uh, a pregame kind of meal. And we had, it was funny because we had a lot of uh, diversity. And so we had a lot of uh, dishes that were very spicy. <laughs> and so our kids ate, it was a Saturday night game. And our gay guys ate like at three or four. We go to Garfield, and at halftime, most of the team was throwing up oh, you know, on the toilet. I mean, it was everybody's sick, and they sucked it up, and we ended up beating them. You know, it was like 24 to 21. And, you know, but that was, you know, you have a couple games like that, but uh, then we rolled. Um, you know, and, w- and then we got down to, you know, we got down to GW Danville and that was just a barn burner. Um, we played great defense and we just, um, you know, we, we, we outscored them. It was funny, you know, um, we, we get down and we stopped them and, uh, then we scored and, um, but the thing is they had the ball, it was fourth down, you know, from the 10 yard line. And they went for it. And I asked uh, their head coach, you know, I go, why did you do that instead of at least kicking a field goal at that point? He goes, we didn't think we could stop you. Hmm. So, now that was a great team. That was a great team. It really was. Oh, Coach, when you look when you look back on your career, um, would you have been just as satisfied with your career if you never won a state championship? You won two. I mean, and what did, what did that mean to you as a coach? To, to, to be at the pinnacle of, of, of the Virginia game? Well, it was great for, it was great for Annandale High School. It was really neat. I'm just telling you, um, you know, yeah, I had Coach Henry had started it off and then Coach Hartage, you know, who I played for. And then I was able to do it along with all the guys that coached with me who were all part of that. And um, so it meant the world to us for our school and, you know, and the Annandale family, mm-hmm. um, you know, and guys that I'd played with and, and all that. that, that, that was it. The community, I mean, it was, it was awesome. And it, and it also, I was really, I was a taskmaster and about not just football, but about school and your education and your conduct and all your character attributes. And so doing that um, really paid off. And it, and it really gave a lot of credit to our players who bought into that. Because at that time, now you're getting to a lot of kids that are like, you know, don't listen to that, you know, don't do that, you know, 
and so it, it was really good for our players and everyone else in terms of who bought in, who put the work in, and how it paid off. So, yeah, there are some great articles online that I read in preparation uh, about Jeremiah Davis uh, quoting him and others about how you preach hard work but respectful, and you know how you carry yourself. So the things you just said. Um, they do, really did have that effect on your players. Coach, if, if you had to compare your team, your 93, 94 teams, with the 72, 78 teams, without the diversity back then, without the weightlifting back then, but much tougher districts, much tougher roads to the to the states, how would you compare those teams, or is it impossible to compare uh, generations? Well, I, I'll tell you who my- I'll tell you who one of the toughest teams was, was the 1965 team. Okay, you go way back, 65 and 67. I mean, without, and that was without weightlifting and all of this stuff, but they had a they had some guys, uh, the Freer brothers, two twin brothers that were defensive tackles that, that went to Tennessee. I mean, they, they, you, you talk about some hard nosed guys, um, you, you know, so it, it's, they had kids that were tough in a, in a, in a different way. It's, it's kind of hard to really compare. Um, you know, you'd like to, I mean, the 78 team had some really great guys and they received a lot of acclaim and I know you've had them on your broadcast and, and it's funny because all these guys, you know, uh, kind of uh, get on each other online and the 94 guys and the 93 guys and the 78 guys. And and I know the guys from 72 and, and all that. So, you know, I mean, the 94 team was pretty good. I mean, that was a pretty good group. I mean, with, I mean, with the athletes, you, you know, we had some pretty good athletes. I'd, I'd kind of lean towards them a little bit, but, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Coach, with this six, incredible success that you had very early in your in your coaching career, um, but you stayed at it. Did you find yourself over time with the change in demographics? And, you know, you, you have to be realistic here. Did you, did you find yourself over time just trying to improve the kids um, be a good mentor to them, put the best football product you could out there? Or did you, did you, did you still try to chase those, cha- those championships when you know it was going to be much tougher with what you're, with, what you're coaching? Well, you always kind of, you, you're, you're always, um, yeah, you're, you're, all, you're always thinking you can find a way to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, and, and um, you know, period. It's just, that's the competitor. And you, you, you realize you know, when you, when you, when you can and you can't, um, but, you know, it was funny. We, we, and, you know, in, in, in 2000, we, we got to 2005, we, 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 and it's always about getting groups of kids. I mean, in 2005, 2006, we, we won back-to-back district championships and we had, we just got a group of tough kids, mm-hmm. but we didn't have enough, you know, but we yet the same thing, we could win our district, but, you know, we had to play Westfield in the first round of playoffs. Right. And we play the heck out of them, but you still couldn't get over the top. But you still enjoy that as much as oh gosh, gotcha. yeah. oh yeah. oh yeah, oh my gosh, oh no, great kids, and we won some big games. You know, we beat Braddock and Oakton, and you know, we beat some really good teams. But at the end of the day, but we had guys going both ways, and you knew it was just going to be a tough road to really. In two thousand eight, we had a really good group of kids, and the same thing. Um, you know, we, I mean, we put up a lot of points and got the first round of playoffs and just missed out beating Chantilly who got to the state semifinals and yeah. And then, you know, and so that in, in 2009, which was my last year. And I, I mean, we worked like crazy, but we went four and six started off the year three and oh, and we lost probably four games by a point, And then we won our last game beating West Potomac and, but that was going to be it. You know, I just, you just start after 20 some years, you just, I was just, you know, getting worn out, getting a little crotchety. And I think it was (laughs) important that I knew it was time for me to, 
to, to when to get out. And, um, you know, then I, I, I enjoyed though later on, um, like coaching with Jeremiah Davis as an assistant, mm -hmm. um, just coaching the offensive line. I love that. And, um, and then going back the last six years and coaching the freshman at Annandale, I love that. It was, it was really neat. It really was. It was a lot of fun. And that was, it was about having some fun and, and just coaching kids. And, um, I, you know, sometimes I think some people don't know when it is time to get out. I mean, it's important if you're not in public school, public school, if you're not enjoying what you do and you don't just want to just help kids and, and get the heck out. Um, but, the, you know, don't go to where you don't enjoy it and, you know, you're not helping people. Yeah. Coach, one thing I find fascinating is you have coaches like like yourself, like Red Jenkins, like Tony Bentley, the basketball coach at Wakefield, um, uh, Bruce Hansen. They go to one school, they stay there. Then you got great coaches that go to every five years they're going to another school. Charlie Thompson, Danny Meyer, not not quite that much, but Don McCool went to quite a few. Ed Henry went to quite a few schools. They were always going where the kids were or whatever. You know, what is the difference? Why why do you think some coaches hang their hat at one school and they stay there? You're an Anandale, I'm an Anandale coach. And some coaches have four or five different head jobs. Well, you know, it's funny. I, um, like Coach Hardage. Coach Hardage, you know, he um, he had a chance at 19, going into the 1975 year, after a year after I graduated, my brother was a senior, and he had the job at Robinson. Okay, it was between him and Ed Henry. Ed Henry was a marshal. He was at he was at Annandale, wow. and and Robinson was going to hire Coach Hardage, and he was going to take the job, and because he told me, and um, he was packing up his office at Annandale, and at the end of the day, he just he go he couldn't do it, he couldn't do it, so he called up he called up Ed Henry, and they were very very good friends. He you know even though he had just played for him and. Said Ed, you know, I can't do it. If you want the job, call him up, tell him. And so he went to he went to Robinson. And Coach Hardage stayed at Annandale. And that year they went to the state finals and lost to Hampton. And then in 78, he won it. You know, he is a stand. And then he stayed all the way until 1989, you know, and I joined him and all that. And so um in 93, we'd won the state championship. And so the Centerville job was open. And it came down to, you know, uh, myself and uh, the fellow from Langley. And, um, and it's funny, you know, that was, that was going to be the next great job. That was good. They had the guys, they, they were loaded. They had the guys that was going to be for years. And I applied for it and did everything, but I, I, I you know, I, I just, I really didn't want to really in the back of my mind, didn't want to go. And so, you know, the principal hired the other fellow from Langley, Fred Benevento, and I was happy. You know, I had the 94 team coming back. And so but I, I had, that happened to me several times. I had a chance to go to Woodbridge High School. I had a chance to go to Chantilly High School. Um, I, and I never, ever wanted to, um, ever, even though I applied for those jobs. I remember Coach Hardage telling me one time, he goes, you know, the grass isn't always greener. And so I never had, after the 94 year, you know, there was never going to be a chance to win a state championship game, but we won three district championships and this and that. But it was just about, I just love being at Annandale. Yeah. And so there's some people like that. And 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 so I had talked to several coaches, high school football coaches, and, and they said, yeah, you know, after five, 10 years, you know, you kind of wear out your welcome and they want a new challenge. And so, yeah, they go to a spot and it's got players and, you know, you got a good chance to win and whatever. So that's good. I thought it was great to spend 33 years in Annandale High School. Yeah. And, you know, so and I still, you know, I got players that are coaching there now. And and there's there's people that I'm involved in the Hall of Fame and you know, just things at Annandale high school. So good for me. I'm happy. And, and, and those other coaches that good for them. Yeah. Yeah. I think of all those lives you changed 
at Annandale. That's amazing. Coach, I, I was I was away from football. Um, I did not I, I refereed basketball and coached basketball, but I, I did not stay with high school football until I started the social media stuff. Then I started going to games again. I couldn't believe how sophisticated high school football is. Yeah. Um, it, it's unbelievable the patterns they run. The pa- the passing when, when I played, there was a lot of play action. So you had wide open receivers. The game is is so much more sophisticated now than it was 40, 40 years ago. Do you do you enjoy the football today? Oh yeah. No, and it's it, but you know, but again, these guys today, these head coaches, that's that's all they do. And they and their staffs, they're doing it, they're doing a, a great job. I mean, they really are. Um, and like you said, I mean, the 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 defenses. What you're doing defensively, you've got to match what they're doing offensively. Look, when I played, you know, in the 70s, I mean, they were basic defenses that didn't change much because the offenses didn't give you a whole lot. What you're seeing today with multiple formations, I mean, like in the passing game, RPOs, all these things, I mean – you can't just sit there and one simple defense, defensive front and one coverage and, you know, and, and, and defend people. And, and so everything has changed. So they're putting, they're putting much more into it. The preparation. Okay. So the kids I talked about, you know, you're not just playing three sports. You got the, everybody's got their green days and this and that quarterbacks are everybody going to camps. They're going to seven on seven camps. It, it's just, it's it's becoming much more intricate, but as much as it's you know getting sophisticated, it's still you got to block and you got to tackle, you know, and and the fundamentals, and that doesn't change. So, how about the how about the future of football, coach? Are you are you bullish on the future of football? I know some some programs have a hard time getting numbers. Well, yeah, you know, it's just. Um, and that was the thing with the USA football, you know, when I was involved, which was great. Um, it was all about, you know, the safety and the heads up football program and tackling. And what we did was the NFL was behind it and they made an emphasis on educating youth club coaches, which I thought was great. I mean, they are the, they were the beginning, the foundation, and they were the guys that needed it the most. And then as years went on, and it's a shame, they kind of got away from it. And they started kind of focusing on the high school guys who, you know, they they just weren't as accepting of it. You know, it was good. And then they kind of got out of it a lot. They just, you know, and it's a shame. Um, they mean, used to see their influence all around on time. But, um, no, I, I think, you know, you look, you look at this the past weekend. I mean, you look at college football and people love it. It's just a matter of, you know, the parents feeling, you know, that it's safe for their kids to play. And that's always about who's coaching them. I'm telling you right now, I mean, it's a tough game, but you, you, you've got to have people that have the safety and the, and the best interest of the kids in mind when they're young, getting them into it and not turning them off. Yeah. Well, last question, coaches. This this has been great. Just the history of Northern Virginia football, and and, and leadership. Um, you know, you're you're you're, you're retirement age now, but you're not much older than me, coach. Um, you, you know, when you when you look back on the decisions that you made, I mean, some of these names that you talked about that worked on these staffs, you had these great people dedicating so much time to these kids and to football, and just just uh, we had all these people, these great leaders involved. And in, in, in high school football and basketball and all the sports, baseball and all the sports. You know, when you look back on it, now you're retired. There are some people, they spend all their working lives just trying to accumulate money and trying to, they think about that. But coaches don't do that. They spend all their time, they spend most much of their time, you know, improving uh, young athletes and stuff. Um, do, and I, I once said to Coach Jenkins that, you know, coaches aren't paid that much but they're rewarded in the influence that they have on their kids that their reward is great because these kids would do anything for you. When you look back on your uh, uh, career, are you very happy with the decisions that you made and all the time that you spent making these, these athletes better? 
Yeah, no, nah, I mean, without a doubt. I mean, you're like you're right. Um, and most of these guys, if they're, they're they've been smart and they they keep their wives, like their wives involved, and they do a great job and they make good money. <laughs> I started a lawn service, and I and and my wife, I mean, she's awesome. She she's in, incredible, and um, so I took her out of the workforce. I had her raise her kids, and then she's back working now. But um, yeah, I started this you know makeshift lawn service that I had for forty two years, like another team. I mean, <laughs> all my wrestlers and football players worked for me, and um, it was just yeah, it was like any other team. And um, but the impact on so many guys. And girls I've had that, that just that you I hear from them today constantly, mm -hmm. and you can't replace that. I mean, you, you, you know, you just you just can't replace that. It would be nice to have made a load of money. It really would, but um, it, it's just I hear from them all the time, all the time. Yeah, I mean, and it's 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 awesome. I mean, and so. And I don't know if people realize uh, how the impact that they have on kids. Even when I was coaching this freshman football in the last six years, you know, when I go to, I see these kids all the time. And it's just uh, from those kids to the guys I coached 30, 40 years ago. Um, and every coach will tell you that. Every, I, I know every coach you've interviewed or whatever, they'll, they'll tell you about the relationships that they have with these former players now men these are guys now men with families and and they talk about what they learned for as being a player from you um you can't replace that and i've got guys i've got friends that i played with in high school and college that you know are tre uh, tremendous business people and make tons of money and would love to have done what you've done coaching um, so no, oh man, it, it's been a wonderful life. It really has. Yes. Well, it's interesting coaching. And I, I had nowhere near the coaching career you had. I coached AAU a couple of years and did some summer, I did summer leagues for many years, but you know, the, the, the kids, they still will contact me or message me. And I, again, I didn't coach them as long as you did, but I remember one time I had lunch with a kid and he said to me, he said, coach, I'll never forget one time. We're, we're playing an AAU game and we're playing against, um, you know, against a really good team. And you told me before the game, you said, you said, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but you said, I want, I want to call him Joe. I want to say, Joe, I want you to make sure every single person in this building knows who you are when you leave today. And you told me that a long time ago, coach. And whenever I played a game after that, I thought about that. Whenever <laughs> I played a game, I wanted everyone who was in that gym to know I was there. And it was just something I, I had forgotten. I had, I had said that, but it sounds like something I would have said. And I'm sure I got it from one of my coaches, but it, it makes you feel so good that a, a guy remembers what I told him 30 years ago. He remembers it. He's just, and I'm yeah. sure it happens to you all the time. Yeah. No, no, it was, no, it was awesome. It's been awesome. Yeah. No, it really has. Yeah. Especially when you have former players that are now coaches and, you know, parents and fathers and yeah, yeah. no, it is. Yeah. Well, look, coach, I took, I took way longer than I, than you promised me, but um, I'm so glad I got a chance to meet you. I'd love to go to a game with you sometime. I, I, I try to get out there every Friday night as well. So maybe some point I can, I can meet you in person, but this, this yeah, Julian. Been, yeah. Yeah. But this is, this has been great to meet you. I really, I'm really appreciative that you took the time to talk to me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks coach. Thanks again. Let's, let's keep in touch. All right, buddy. Thank All right, you. Man. Take care.